They hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. There you go. How you doing today, champ? Doing great, man. Thank you, for taking, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. How was the honeymoon? I noticed you were on IG. I saw the pictures of you out there. Yeah, uh, it was good. It was a good time. It went, uh, went very fast, though. <laughs> I can imagine so. I can imagine so. A little bit postponed. What a weird schedule thing going on with the blast off fight. Yeah, yeah, it was, that was a big mess. But uh, hey, we made it there. We we got the job done. It was, uh, it was great. <laughs> that was it that was an epic fight by the way we i was watching it yeah. i was on a on the live stream with some friends at least like 100 people we were all just kind of and it was we were yelling <laughs> at the tv and everybody was just like what's going on i don't know it yeah it was definitely uh it was a pretty good fight man it was uh it was a tough one it was back and forth and um definitely. you know i came on strong in the beginning and the end so you know it was uh it was good it was it was a fascinating fight. I didn't I didn't think Blasov was gonna be that cagey, but uh, he's got a yeah. tough chin. I got to give it to him because he was eating those yeah, shots man. and <laughs> you can yeah, see in a <laughs> he definitely has a good chin and he's uh, he's small in there. You know, like he kept putting his head out of position for me to land those big shots. Mm -hmm. You know, he kept you know pretty much giving me the back of his head where. You know, in the 11th round, it kind of worked out for him. But <laughs> yeah, I was a, uh, I was very amazed at uh, his eagerness to kind of stand in front of you like that. He was kind of herky jerky, which I knew it's what kind of his thing was to kind of be herky jerky and sideways. But his head uh -huh. was just nice and right there for you. And during the exchanges, yeah. you would crack him, and uh, he would definitely get that wake up call to back up. And you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, he took everything was, well though. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he did. definitely made it uh, a tough night. He did. You came on very strong in that 12th round and and you pretty much took it over. That was the round where you just saw that championship grit and uh, it was it was a good yeah. fight. Those of us that watched it, I was thoroughly entertained. I, I hope it's candidate for fight of the year because I didn't haven't seen too many fights that gutsy and ballsy so far this year. And uh, yeah, it was definitely a competitive match. It was good. Yeah, <laughs> that long that Long Island uh, toughness right there. I don't know what's in the water over there, but you got guys like you and Jerry Cooney and Chris Algieri. Like, what what is it about Long right. Island that just makes you guys so damn tough? What what is that about? I don't know, man. I guess I, I grew up kind of in a tough area, and um, you know, I'm just I'm just fighting to you know be something special and uh, you know better my life. So, it's you know, we're, motivation. We're, we're all <laughs> we're, we're all we're all in there with you, Joe. We're all in there with you emotionally. Uh, I've been on the ride since the Will Rosinski fight. Uh, I remember I wasn't keying in for that fight. I was there more for the for the Kid Chocolate Miracle Man headliner, and then saw you fighting on there yeah. against Will Rosinski. And Will Rosinski, I guess, was like the man for New York City at the time, or he was going to be. And I was a huge Kelly Pavlik fan, so I know that Kelly Pavlik fought Willie Rosinski in the last fight um. of his career. And then it came down to you fighting Will Rosinski, and then you beat Will Rosinski over there at the Barclay Center. And uh, I'll never forget, I remember the video of you, the post fight, after that Rosinski fight, you're out down there, it's in some part of the Barclays, but I just remember you talking on camera and, and uh, Joe, you're you're basically Rocky without trying to be Rocky. It's, it's awesome, man, when you talk, <laughs> you're like, yo, this guy is, he's the real deal. Yeah. Like, he's not even trying, and he's just like, I am that dude. I met that tough East Coast, hardworking blue collar dude, and and uh, your story. Not not many boxers have a captivating story, Joe, that just grabs them like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, I was like, this guy, this guy's that, tough, and I like um, this guy. That was a great fight too, me and Will. Man, he he came out and put on a great show with me. You know, it was a great fight. <laughs> did you and uh, Did you and Will come up together in the amateurs in New York City around that yeah, area? Yeah, um, actually, he was a little older, so he um. Like when I came up, as I was a junior, he was a novice. When I turned novice, he was open class fighter. So we we never we never met as amateurs because by the time I got to the open class, he was already he turned pro. Yeah. So he was just somebody that I watched in the amateurs and you know looked up to a little bit. And uh, you know there it was we ended up fighting <laughs> later on. Nice. And, was that you know, the he uh... a partner? It was, uh, you know, it was, it was cool. Also helps you with camps now or after that? Um, 
Well, before that, we even we sparred here and there, and then after that, we we even continued a little bit. Actually, nice. not so much after, but before we definitely sparred a lot. Was was that Barclay Center? Was that the biggest event you had done up until that point? Oh uh, yeah, that was my biggest fight up to that date. Yeah. How did how did that feel coming out of that tunnel, seeing all those? New Yorkers, because I imagine you probably had a good representation and so did Will Rosinski. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, it was a great crowd, you know, like you said, it was on the Danny Jacobs car too. And, uh, you know, Will, he's a New York City fire, you know, fireman. And, uh, you know, us both being from New York, we had a lot of people there as well. So it was, uh, it was, it was a great night. <laughs> yeah, I could hear a lot of them in the Vlasov fight for sure. You were definitely a... A lot of your peoples were in that crowd. You could hear them just yelling. It was yeah. We got as many as we could get there. You know, a lot of people, you know, had trouble getting there because of the the flights and everything. But um, you know, we we still had a decent fan base there. It was it was nice. It's a uh, good to finally see you as the favorite in the betting odds. I don't know why they keep underestimating you, Joe. I don't know how many veterans or former champions or titleists you have to knock unconscious before people start taking you serious <laughs> yeah man i mean <laughs> this is the first one that i was uh not the favorite it was a little weird i mean you know being the favorite was a little weird you know <laughs> i was like why no, do you why I'm do still you still on the door why do you suppose they they underestimate you joe like after you've been knocking people out why why do you constantly get the short end on the odds and come in the underdog i mean i i don't know I'm not uh, not flashy enough. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. But uh, you know, I it, I like it though. You know, I like just keep proving people wrong and shocking people. It, you know, makes it even better. Nice. I feel like you're like the representative for all underdogs. In a yeah, yeah. Like I said, we just emotionally we're on that ride with you and it's been fun to watch it for me since 2015 following the ups and yeah, downs of it great, man I, I finally got this thing Ooh, you know? look at that the wbo right i brought it heavy. out for the video oh man <laughs> world oh, champ man. so that's you great. know i plan on holding on to it for a little while and uh you know hopefully uh claim some more belts along the way are you ready for the unifications <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I want the big fights, you know. You you look at my career, that's all I fought is the the best, you know. So I want to continue that. And yeah, you are not playing. You are a man on a mission. <laughs> you are you are you are dog determined to get it done, and it, it's just been a joy. You are just a hardworking dude. It's it's amazing. Um, yeah, man, I finally got a belt. You know, it's time to get the big fights and make the money. You know, while well, I can true that you earned it it's a you know it's a short shelf life in this boxing game in this fight game the hurt business and by all means yeah. man get get those fights joe get those fights yeah. we need them we need them now you know it took a took a while to get here so yeah we, we started now a time and do so now i gotta all make right. some money <laughs> so let me let me ask i hope you do make some money joe um are you can i ask you a question joe smith jr are you still registered with local 66 yeah um actually my union dues are due so uh <laughs> my trainer my trainer jerry cap was actually with um one of my union delegates just now and he was telling me my union dues are due so he he's gonna pay it for me while he's there and, uh, <laughs> i gotta you know i gotta give him the money when i need him <laughs> that's a good man right there joe still paying yeah, his union he's, dues. Always, he's always six, looking six, out six. for me <laughs> yeah joe you know he's a really good dude your coach is is a you guys have a very very special bond was he has he been your coach the yeah. entire time you've been boxing um well since my like last two fights as an amateur he's been my trainer nice yeah, yeah jerry's a super cool dude he, he reached out to me i i make boxing content on TikTok. i barely got into it i've always been a i'm a lifelong boxing fan i'm a clubhouse guy i never really competed but i've been training in boxing since i was a teenager and I make boxing content on TikTok, and he contacted me in the DMs, and he said, you know, have you heard of Joe Smith Jr.? And I'd already done videos on you. Like, Hell, are you serious? The Irish Bible, mm -hmm. come on now, <laughs> you know? And he's like, I'm yeah. Joe Smith Jr.'s coach. And uh, I was skeptical yeah, at first. Cool. I was, you know, I was like, no way, dude. This is Joe Smith Jr.'s coach talking to me. And uh, sure <laughs> enough, he's your coach. 
you know. Man, look at that, and here we are talking now. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I am, I am forever going to be indebted to him for that, and I would definitely like to get him in an interview sometime too. That is, yeah, a, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to come on and talk. He likes talking about me, so. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. He does. I like hearing him during the fights. Now that there's a uh, no crowds, you can hear him yelling. You know, go to the yeah. body, go to the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really follow the be quiet rule in the corner. He tries to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I love it. I love it. He's just, he's got that that East Coast twang in his voice. You're just like, I love it. And then you sometimes you can hear the uh, the corner conversations you guys have, and it's just, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Let's let's go with this uh, this career trajectory you've had. You beat Will Rosinski in that fight, and then you had the Andre from Far fight, and that's when I think a lot of people really started to take notice. You went in there in Chicago, which is pretty much his fan base home turf because he's Polish and they're just huge out there like that. 33 to one underdog. What was your mindset going into that Fonfara fight? I mean, it was just, you know, it was, it was huge for me. It was like my opportunity to show the world what I got. And, uh, you know, I took full advantage of it. I trained my ass off. I got there and, uh, you know, I shocked myself that night. <laughs> You know, I, I can just, imagine. We were all shocked. <laughs> oh. yeah. I mean, I expected to to go the distance in a 12, you know, hard round fight, you know, tough fight. And, uh, you know, the first good shot I landed, you know, the fight was over. So <laughs> it was a great night for me. Huge, you know, huge accomplishment and uh, great experience. It seems to me that uh, Fonfara severely underestimated your power. I think he just assumed he could eat those shots because... He seemed very yeah, he comfortable to just right yeah, stand. Yeah. I think he thought you were going to go on the back foot or something because and then you mm -hmm. caught him with that overhead right. He dropped. He got back up. And then that se that sequence in the corner with the, the hook and the cross. And it, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's 99. one of my favorite uh, things to watch, man. That was Those were some serious punches I was landing, man. And they were clean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You connected with the clean. Yeah, that overhead, that overhead right when you see their head snap, you're just like, "Yep, that's that's Joe Smith Jr. doing his thing with that right hand." <laughs> and even that that hook is pretty nasty too. Have you yeah, always yeah. had power like that, Joe? Yeah, always. And from the the day I stepped into the gym, you know, first day in the yeah. gym, my father, you know, and the trainer at the time, they're like, "You got to stick with this, man. You got something that, you know, you can't you can't learn." <laughs> oh man, on a personal note. I hate guys like you in the gym. <laughs> I was not born with power. I am I am a pillow-handed, volume-punching guy. Yeah. And when you get those heavy-handed guys and, and you're just born with it, some guys just have it. And like some people mm -hmm. just even have crude, even some beginners, they're very crude and you'll you'll see them and they'll hit and you'll be like, dude, I how do you have that? Why? And you yeah. know, and you, don't, get you don't really know. People don't really know what it is until they experience it. <laughs> you know? Clearly, like, clearly, they're like, yeah, I've been hit before. You know, I'll be all right. And then when they feel that that special power, then they know. <laughs> no, it's a it's a gift from the gods, Joe. You were definitely blessed with that one. You can you can see the reactions on their faces when you touch clean. And after the last few years of seeing that same reaction, it's it's always that same look. You can see their head kind of snapping and. It's mm -hmm. just hug, hugging time or backup time, and you can see like the eyes get a little bit wide, and it's a beautiful yep. thing to witness. It's a beautiful and thing to witness. And you're seeing that against the best fighters in the world, you know, so it's definitely uh, something there. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, you've definitely, you, you've you've had a couple of losses, no biggie, because they've been against the best of the best. And I know mm -hmm. in the Sullivan Barrera fight, you had broke your jaw in like the second round or something like that. Yeah, I mean... In my eyes, I got one true loss, and that's to Bivol. Mm -hmm. You know, he. I would uh, agree with that. You know, it wasn't my night. The other two losses that I have, you know, they were injuries. You know, I went into those fights not a hundred percent, and you know, pretty much the, like the Barrera fight, I thought my career was over before I even stepped in the ring. But oh, what was going I on made there? It, well, the my jaw it was. Uh, you know, I was having issues with it before the fight. I went to the hospital. I got x-rays done. And, um, you know, they told me they didn't really see anything. But I knew there was something wrong. And first thing, I get hit with a punch and the jaw was broken all of a sudden. I mean, my eyes, I, I truly believe it was broken before the fight. And, um, 
you know, because I, I was very sick beforehand. You know, I was in the bathroom dying <laughs> oh. you know, the week of the fight. And, uh, you know, I just I knew it was broken. And um, I, I feel like you, you have know? the skill set to, to to beat Sullivan Barrera in a rematch. And I don't know if Sullivan Barrera is even competing because oh, yeah. he's Cuban. So yeah, he's got to uh, be like 45. <laughs> Yeah, that would, you know, it could be like a just a redemption thing, but at this point I just want the uh you know, I want to redeem myself against Bivol, but I want to go after the you know, the king of the division first and uh you want the you, you want know, the big monsters off the top, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I want to get the, I want to get all the belts. <laughs> if you if you had the choice over who you can fight first, Bivol or Better BF, who would you take? I mean, I'd like to fight B Baterbiev and then uh, Bivol. Whoo! That's know, a that's, that's, that, 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 those are two pretty. Those are whoo! Those are going to be some good fights, Joe. <laughs> oh yeah! If the, if we can make them happen, they're going to be, you know, very entertaining and fun watching fights. <laughs> I hope so. I, I would love to see this Rocky movie continue. I mean, you got your belt against the Russian. The Vlasov fight in and of itself was already a Rocky fight. You know, then you're going up. Mm -hmm. It's just the Russians are taking all the belts, and the Russians have been doing yeah, very man. well. <laughs> yeah, I I got I, I beat one now. Now I got to get the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, dude, just just add heads to the mantle. Hey, I'm all for seeing the belts in American hands. It's always good for boxing, and it's just always good for America. Period. Because I think we yeah, need to see definitely. more belts here. I, I feel like America, we kind of have such a big thing about our exceptionalism we're not really paying attention as a boxing fan base to like what's really going on in the state of boxing the russians and the mexicans yeah. are they're just they're taking, taking everything it all. You know, it's, it's, it's like they're taking all the belts we're we gotta, here. Uh, <laughs> gotta bring some back here yeah we need to get them back here badly badly okay mm -hmm. so one of my uh favorite fighters growing up uh two of them my favorite fighters were manny pacquiao b hop Okay, so you're going into the B Hop fight, and that's probably the biggest thing that everybody knows you for is you knock B Hop out the ring. What was your mindset going into that fight with Bernard Hopkins? Same as all of them, man. I just get in there and uh, you know, give it my ball, give it my all, and uh, you know, I know when I do that, I'll come out on top. So I went nice. in there and uh, just gave it a hundred percent. I knew it was a huge opportunity, and uh. You know, it all worked out. <laughs> it definitely did. How did it, how did it feel when you when you started to see Bernard Hopkins fly out the ring? What were you thinking in your head? Well, up until that point, like the fight was, you know, it was a good fight, and he was in the fight the whole time, and I hit him with some of my best shots right on his chin, and this guy just <laughs> just looked at me and did his little dance away. <laughs> and came back with something or I hit him with an overhand right I remember one time I was on the rope I hit him with a good shot and he just like leaned with it and came right back and hit me with a right hand and I went to move and then he hit me with another one the double right hand back to back I was like oh man this guy's I'm not gonna get him out of there I, I, I did not think I was gonna stop him up until the moment it happened <laughs> When I landed a big shot and I seen him, I seen him finally like going. I just kept going. I was like, this fight's ending here. <laughs> yeah, there was there was some sequences there against the ropes where you two were definitely going at it. It was it was dark. I don't think Bernard Hopkins had been stopped in recent in in, in recent memory. Never. Has has he ever been stopped? I don't think so. No, he was never stopped before, and that you yeah. Know, with that everything going on, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to. Be the first and only person to stop the legend. Oh, you certainly <laughs> no, were. I mean, no, he went the whole distance with Sergey Kovalev just prior to you, and then you, mm -hmm. regardless regardless of Behop's age, Behop is timeless, and even at fifty, he's a threat. I don't. Behop is going to yeah. be an anomaly and go down in the history books. I remember, I remember getting in the ring with him and like getting in a clinch, and I I grabbed them. And I, I couldn't believe how solid this guy was. Like at his age, like his body was just a rock. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that's but, uh, that's that's B Hop for he's very yeah. dedicated to the craft and he lives amongst life, you know. Mm -hmm. What a such an interesting life story to B Hop is, but that knockout for sure. If the fun far knockout wasn't enough, you had to do it to B Hop. And then yeah, we definitely <laughs> yeah. 2016 was a huge year, and you know, it was 
it was definitely an exciting year to watch me fight. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to do that in 2021. <laughs> I, I hope you do too, Joe. I feel like you should be a household name in boxing. I keep, at my gym at least, I know we're big fans of yours and stuff. And in San Diego, a lot of us boxing fans, we we, we fuck with Joe Smith Jr. <laughs> like we we know when you're gonna um, fight that it's gonna be entertaining and it's gonna be war and and all my friends that I, you know, it's a bunch of Mexicans I train with and Mexicans are hard to get them to watch. And, and, and unless yeah. they know you're gonna fight, they don't wanna watch it. But they know when Joe Smith Jr. <laughs> fights. No, I like to fight. Oh, man, <laughs> I wanna, Joe. I don't want to go the distance, man. I want to get you out of there and go celebrate. <laughs> that's that's clear. Enough. You are a straight tank, Joe. It's it's amazing to watch. Everybody knows it, but nobody has the answer to the game plan. They're like, I know what Joe's going to do. He's going to get dead in your chest and try to beat the snot out of you. And he's not going to back mm -hmm. up. And and uh, it, it works. In a, yeah. You know, I wish I had that kind of power, Joe. Good Lord. <laughs> So, and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm trying to bring some new, more things out, you know, bring some new things to the table. And, uh, you know, I believe you're going to get to see it soon. You know, my last fight wasn't my greatest performance, but, uh, you know, Vlasov is a very awkward guy and, uh, you know, he'll make it a tough fight for anyone. But, um, you know, I'm well, excited to get back out there and uh, put on another great you, uh, I've definitely, over time, see you definitely increase your skill set and, I don't know if increase your skill set, but show more of your boxing abilities. I know after that Bivol loss that you had, you definitely seem to have kicked the gear up more into moving yeah. around more and staying behind that jab, uh, especially going to that Jesse Hart fight. Yeah. You know, it, it was interesting because I remember Jesse Hart was talking all that stuff about uh, avenging Bernard Hopkins, his idol at the at the pre-fight. Yeah. And uh, that, that fight was it's honestly like his his reaction to when he got hit the first time was one of my favorite because. He told me he was gonna come out to meet me in the center of the ring and fight. And he came out, I threw a punch and he just looked at me and started dancing. And I, I, I put my hands up and I was like, what happened? I thought we were gonna fight, man. And he just ran the whole fight. So it, I remember that. Good. I remember that. I was I remember watching that fight with Jesse Hart and I was thinking he's gotta get tired at some point of doing this bicycle thing. Like <laughs> you you had him on the bike. Clearly, he was spooked by the power. And I, I count what the second, the fourth, and the seventh round. It was just he just slowly started to look softer and softer facially as the rounds went on. Yeah. And just he's just bleeding coming all out the face. And I'm just he like said, oh. he said, Joe, you think you think you hit that hard, Joe? I was like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Is that what he said in the pre-fight? But, uh, you know, yeah, I guess he did. before the I guess fight. He, so I guess he didn't get a chance you know, to. It, uh, it, it was a, yeah, I mean, he didn't really uh, get the full full effect of all my punches, you know, considering the way we fought. But it, it was a good fight, you know. He, he was in it, and uh, it was good. He made it through it. Tough fight. You proved, you proved, you proved, you proved your point. You proved your point. You know, he was not going to get yeah. to avenge that B-Hop loss. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> that one's staying with me forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really is. It really is. Yeah, ended his career. It is what it is. Then you move up to Eliator Alvarez. I think that was where we got to see some of your best boxing work. You definitely yeah. were very patient with Eliator. You broke him down systematically and then took him out yeah, the ring, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a, I believe that was a great performance from me and uh you know I just, I just want to continue that <laughs> was that was that your mindset going into the Eliator Alvarez fight to to be more focused on boxing or was that just how it turned out um I just wanted to do whatever it took to win you know and uh I felt to I had to be a little safe with him because he's got that the, the good right hand that thing comes out of nowhere you don't even see it coming mm. and uh you know so I wanted to box a little more and we just broke him down, and then when it was time, we, you know, jumped on him. Nice. It was it was an excellent fight. When you took him out the ring, I was like, well, that's another person getting knocked out the ring. You don't see that too often, and you got and two he, of those in your Another career. tough guy. I don't think he's ever been stopped before either, and, you know, he he was tough, man. Uh, the, some of the shots I hit him with in one round, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'd never hit anybody like that and had him stand up. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, he's a, he's a big durable dude. Uh, clearly not durable enough for that for that Joe Smith right hand. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. My goodness. Then you had the Maxim Vlasov fight. It looked a little bit 
shaky at first. It looked like that awkwardness was kind of getting to you at the very yeah, beginning, but then yeah. you started to crank up the pressure in, in that. You know what happened though? He, he cut me in the first round right away, right above, mm -hmm. you know, right under my eyelid. And I couldn't see shit. <laughs> Every yeah, round I came out, the blood was just dripping right into my eye the whole time and burning. And with his jerky movement and the, the velocity and the speed, you know, and the, the how many punches he throws, you don't you don't even see the punches coming because he's throwing so many and they're just coming from all over the place. It was it was hard. <laughs> it was a tough fight, but you know, I pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a, he's definitely an awkward guy that hits you from strange angles. Is there? Are you guys gonna have a rematch? Because I don't know where I read somewhere there's a rematch. There is that gonna happen or is that no? Um, not at this time, not that I know of. I, I mean, my goal right now is to get Paterbiev. You know, I want him. I want the big fights. But, uh, you know, whatever it is, I you know, I got to get uh, I gotta get my fair share this time. <laughs> not, <laughs> hey, make some money. By all means, you have Especially the belt now. The, yeah, I got the belt, man. We got to get the big fights now. And, I, exactly. you know, I want more belts, like I was saying before. Unify them, Joe. Bring it home. Bring it mm -hmm. home, Joe. <laughs> are you, are you uh, still running your 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 tree cutting business while you're? Are you just full time fighting now? Uh, I'm full time fighting. I mean, when I'm, you know, I stop at the job sites and hang out here and there. You know, my father he he runs the business. You know, while I'm training and stuff. And uh, you know, when I when I show up to the job sites and I want to start working, everyone starts yelling at me anyway. You know, to be careful. <laughs> so uh, I just try uh, to I can, I just can focus this, on training. <laughs> at, this, at this point in the game, Joe, it's 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 all box. You got a chance to seize history. You already have seized history. It's time to make it even more historical with your legacy and, and get those belts. And I and I and I and I give you credit because you got a good shot at this, Joe. <laughs> you got a good shot at this. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing. You know. I'm, I got a great shot to unify these belts, so I want to give it 100% and, uh, you know, focus on that. But I'm trying to build my future at the same time and make sure I'm set up for after boxing. Nice, nice. What did you, what could you say you took away from the Maxim Vlasov fight that you want to improve on? Um, I mean, it's the same stuff that I've been working on, you know, just keep, uh, you know, working on my combinations, just, just staying a little looser and uh, just a little more movement, things like that. And, you know, I've been working on it. I believe I believe it's there now. It just, I just got to get it to come out 100% in the fight. You know, and that that's one of the things Velasco did good before the fight. He said, you know, Joe's, Joe's been working on his boxing and improving these things, but it's hard to get into a you know a tough fight and continue doing the things that you're just learning, you know. Mm. So I'm just gonna keep continuing working on it, and I believe each fight is gonna show a little better. I got faith in your skill set, Joe. You're definitely showing new wrinkles each game, each fight. So I, I can't wait to see what mm -hmm. it is you bring into your next fights. No, it's so. gonna it's gonna be great, especially if. Uh, we get the big fights that are out there that everyone wants to see. I think you'll get them. I don't really see what other options they have, but to give you those title fights. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't... that's what people want to see, man. They want to see unification fights. The best yes. versus the best. The best. <laughs> and and hopefully we get that. All right, Joe. I got a question for uh, the young aspiring boxers who follow my content. Strangely enough, I managed to make a network all around the country of amateur competing boxers. Joe Smith Jr., what advice would you give to a young aspiring boxer that has dreams of becoming a champion? What does it take? Man, just make sure you're working every day, you know, and working on your technique and staying in shape and uh, keep yourself busy. Nice. You do those things and uh, anything's possible. <laughs> there you go. There you go. On a, on a personal note of trivia, Joe, who were your top five favorite boxers of all time? top five um i mean yeah i know I, I mean there's a lot of great fighters out there it's hard to you know yeah. just take names i mean but you know i used to i love watching um roy jones you know his knockout reels always got me like amped up when i was a kid 
Mike Tyson, um, you know, you can't take nothing away from Mayweather. He's one of the best boxers ever, you know, he's a, a great boxer. I enjoyed watching him fight because some of the movement and things he did in there were just awesome. <laughs> how do you, how do you feel about, since, since you opened up the Mayweather box, how do you feel about this new thing with the YouTube and TikTokers doing these big boxing events? Is that good or bad for boxing? Um, I mean, I think it's good in ways, but it's bad in others, you know, because I don't think, you know, a world champion should be fighting, you know, a YouTuber you know, on his first fight. But, uh, mm. you know, these guys that, you know, they, they're doing it, though, you know, they they got a lot of followers. They got a big fan base and they're bringing it over to boxing. And the only thing I don't like is that they don't really respect the, the sport so much. You know, these guys, you know, they don't really know what it's like to come up from the beginning to get to the a position that they're in just because they have a lot of fans. Yeah, that thing, that's the most gut-wrenching part of it is, uh, you know, they, they did 1.4 million pay-per-view buys or something for that last fight. And I think yeah. about all my friends that I know that are competing fighters and the sacrifices they've made. And so part of me likes the fact that they're bringing such a ridiculous amount of new eyes to the sport. But then yeah. the other side of me is like, what are we doing? Like, there's so many more deserving fighters who deserve these opportunities. Exactly. Wow. There's, there's, I mean, for example, I mean, look how many fights I've had. And, uh, you know, these guys yeah. are making more money than I have. You know, yeah. fights, you know? crazy hey, hey, give, and, it, give uh, us give us some time joe i think you'll be <laughs> making that kind of money yeah and i mean it's just for they just don't show the respect to other fighters and stuff that you should i feel definitely i agree with that i, I think the respect factor is is, is very key and uh, usually people within the boxing community understand the dangers and the inherent sport in itself so we just have a certain level of respect I mean, you guys are gladiators and we have to respect yeah. that you're putting your life on the line just to entertain us. And then you got mm -hmm. Jake Paul who's out here just saying whatever he can. <laughs> comes out to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're just like, to everybody. And I'm just like, yo, I, I like this. That's cool. The rich you, every time life. the guy fights, though, every time Jake fights, I get like uh, a thousand messages from people. Please shut this guy up. You know, you got to fight him next. Uh, I'm walking down the road the other day on my block. They're like, please tell me you're fighting Jake Paul next. I'm like, <laughs> why why am I fighting Jake Cole? I mean, come on. <laughs> Dude, you would give that kid brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget about it. Yeah. I mean, we we are about the same weight though. I mean, if they want to make it happen, um, I'll be the one to shut him up. But <laughs> oh, man. I don't think <clears throat> I don't think he wants any real smoke, Joe. I think he wants to keep it light and fluffy and uh yeah, he wants no. he wants to fight MMA guys. It's it's fascinating because you know, Daniel Cormier Tyron Woodley, they're all super livid at this guy. But after what they saw happen to Ben Askren, none of them wants to test him in a boxing ring. And they all keep saying, <laughs> I hate that guy. Tell him to come into the octagon. And I'm, where's, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> come yeah. into the ring. I mean, from what I hear, he's got pretty, you know, he works though. From what I, you know, I see like videos and stuff and people are always saying that he works hard in the gym. So good for him. He does. He does. He's actually coming to my gym in San Diego. Uh, he came in there once to come in and train. So he's been on it. He's got the money to get the good trainers and stuff. And the MMA community yeah. is super livid right now. But uh, anyways, yeah. I mean, at, least he's, at least he's putting in the work, though, to try to, you know, win these fights and, uh, you know, do the right thing by it. <laughs> nice. He's, he's building up his career. Anyways, I, I was. it's been a pleasure talking to you, Joe. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I think I asked all the, the little weird trivia questions I wanted to ask. But uh, thank you very much, Joe, for taking the time to talk to me. It, this is this is an honor, and I, I consider it a privilege to get yeah. to talk to champions like you. And uh, All right, thanks for having me, man. Uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime. I would, I would love to. Please, please keep me in the loop. If there's anything I can ever do for you with my small platform, feel free to let me know. I'm, I'm always in, an open door to anybody inside the industry. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, Joe Smith Jr. I will be following attentively and and I think you got this in the bag, Joe. Unify these belts and bring it home. Yeah, I hope to do that, man. All right, thanks for having me. Have a good one. Thank you, Joe. Bye.